All right, Romila, how are you? Hi, good morning, Sujata. I'm doing good. How are you? How's everyone else uh, watching this uh, live show today? Yes, we are wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. But uh, before we go ahead and start, I actually wanted to give a like a background. Uh, good morning, Mayesh, for joining. Uh, so the reason why we were doing this is a few weeks ago, you know, some things happened in our Indian community. Probably people know it better from, you know, India. And uh, that kind of like bothered me, like, you know, at what point of time people ponder over this for a long time and take that extra step and uh, the unreturnable path, right? So, and then I kept on thinking about it. I, I didn't get a lot of uh, guidance about it. And then something else happened again. And I was like, you know, this is it. But I didn't want to like just Google up, right? So I wanted to talk to somebody who knows the uh, right answers and the right path to this. And then I, I found you. So I I'm so glad and you are the right person uh, who can actually give us some insight about what goes on in this complicated thing called a head brain and uh, uh, just, you know, throw some light if somebody like for even for me sometimes i feel that too when i talk to my friend and we both think like like are we like down what is going on with us you know so how do we identify or if somebody is having any you know something going on in their head and it's been bothering them can we find that out what is it like can we help them can we help ourselves uh, and not be the person like sitting there oh my god i wish i knew I could have done something, right? I don't want to be that person. So that is the reason why I invited you over. And people who are watching, let me tell you, uh, Mrs. Pramila Kumar, she is the founder and executive director of Sanjeevani. And she is also an active volunteer for education, women empowerment, community awareness, and support for mental health concerns. And uh, I'm very amazed at what she's doing. And she's actually as distinguished as the top 20 Global Women of Excellence, 2019 by Illinois Congressman Danny Davis for her efforts in furthering Sanjeevani's mission. She lives here in the suburbs of Chicago with her family. And when I said Sanjeevani, Sanjeevani provides free counseling, advocacy and support to anyone who is going through mental health concerns or domestic abuse. And uh, uh, she actually is available, like the services are available 24 hours, seven days a week and through phone, emails, and even in-person interactions. They have a lot of language coverage. Um, most of the Indian languages are covered, Spanish, English, South Asian languages. So they are here to support, you know, and I wanted to share that here at the beginning of the call so that people know um, who Mrs. Pramila Kumar is. I would like to welcome her to this chat session. And then uh, Mrs. Pramila Kumar, you want to say something before we go ahead and start? Oh, again, good morning, Sujata, and thank you, King of Sanjeevani, and uh, inviting me over. Uh, I'm not an expert per se, but I'm going to try to answer the uh, responses or any discussion to the best of my ability. Uh, I am a, a MH, uh, mental health first aid worker uh, trained in uh, uh, adult mental health and also youth mental health, and I'm also a, a domestic violence uh, trained counselor uh, from the state of Illinois. So I'm going to provide all information and also based on some of the calls which we've received uh, through Sanjeevni in the past five years, I'm going to sh share all that. So that uh, the unfortunate incident which happened recently, uh, uh, very sad and uh, you know, rest in peace for those departed. Hopefully with the information and awareness shared today, we can prevent such of these in future. So thank you once more for having me here, uh, Sujata. Of course. Yes, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, to start with, right, I mean, I've never, growing up, I never heard this word called depression, okay? That was not part of our life. That's not part of our vocabulary at all. But I keep hearing this word a lot and it got more attention from me when I actually heard Deepika Padukone talk about it, saying <laughs> she went through it and she's a survivor of I don't know if you call it sex like, survivor of uh, you know men depression, and I was thinking like man this is serious this is real like you know things you know are tough and I watched her uh, interviews a couple of times, and I could see how how much trauma it could be for somebody who is going through that 
so in simple words like for layman like us right what is depression like what what causes it so feeling you know people feel sadness you know people feel let down uh, people have a loss of interest and uh, in daily activities or other things going on in their lives this is very common which we all experience this often and on uh, on and off but if this prolongs and if it affects our daily life substantially that means the the concern the, this short term concern has probably grown into depression and this is the time to seek help so first thing is you know uh, to understand this simple belief is going to help us how to solve depression okay so and again why do we feel depressed you know things are not in our uh, things do not go our way you know nobody is listening to us uh, you know uh, things i wanted is not happening uh, things i plan to do is not happening uh, trauma uh, accidents incidents all of these are different triggers which brings in the feeling of depression so clinically normally what people would say if this kind of uh, behavior persists in our life for at least 2 weeks or more then definitely we would recommend seek any help talk okay. to a trusted person family friend or uh, or perhaps a doctor just to understand what is going and you mentioned dipika padukone so dipika yeah. padukone in one of her interviews mentioned that when she was growing up a teenager she she felt a lot of things happening with her you know physically and mentally she did not know what it was she couldn't find words that when she visited a professional they said dipika you have clinical depression and then she was so happy she said you know what whatever is happening to me is not uncommon there's actually a word uh, yes. you know, there's an actual problem and then she says if you find that out there is always hope around but feel you have to first acknowledge it correct is hope to fix it to find a resolution to it okay so the acknowledgement is more important right Absolutely. like we yes. have this that's true and right. actually that addresses a lot of issues right when you do acknowledge so the, yes. Sujata, i'm going to ask you one question say supposing yes. you know you're my friend right and uh, yes. you i have a i have a heart problem i have cancer if i tell you sujata mm -hmm. you know I'm, i'm suffering through cancer i'm suffering through a heart problem will you help me so of course Yeah, of course. You said you're going to help me. Of course, you know, yes. no questions asked because no questions you know, asked. Yeah, yeah, you can see the symptoms in me. You can see the 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 medicines lying around my house. You can see that I'm visiting the doctor. Maybe I've had a surgery. You can see all that, right? Physically, yeah. you can see. But if I tell you or anyone to say, you know what, I think I am uh, going through a phase of depression. Will you help me? And you may say, well, you look just fine. Where is yeah. depression? Yeah. Oh my God! Right. Should I really be with Pramila because she has depression? So mental health concerns have generally no visible symptoms. Right. Ha. Huh. Okay. There. Um. Adding to your, uh, you know, the previous point, somebody is actually asking, how do we distinguish between a general worry, stress, and depression? So, like, I was also thinking, like you said, right? Sadness, prolonged sadness, two weeks. so i didn't even know there was a time frame like that that means it has been there with you longer right yes. that becomes your own baggage then mm -hmm. so uh, how do you differentiate between okay this we probably are putting it away saying oh my god i'm just worrying right i'm just being sad i'm just being being as i sometimes used to tell myself worrying is part of my life you know i have to worry about it otherwise things won't go well that's what i used to tell myself but how do you distinguish between depression and worrying like sad when when does it cross the stage so normally for any of these uh, depression or anxiety issues some of them is physical and some of it is behavioral so for example if someone is uh, noticing a sudden weight gain or, or a weight loss you know uh, uh, insomnia or sleeping a lot or you know fatigue all the time tiredness all the time uh, just uh, inability to do regular chores which they were doing you know even something as simple as taking a shower you know changing my clothes or you running a comb uh, on my head if some of these symptoms are observed for a period mm -hmm. of at least 2 weeks or more then it's possible that the person has more than being just worried something has inflicted the person and also to say sujata you know what exactly is a mental health or a depression problem it's basically an a chemical imbalance there's nothing wrong with that person it's not that okay. i can control to say hey depression i don't want you 
just go there i'm just free find on my it can come up to anyone huh. rich poor male female young old and also someone like to pick up a dukon yeah wow so wow that's that's great i mean i didn't know that these things you could observe that you yes. know uh, like doing your day to day things that is going to bother you that means there is a, a situation like you need to address it that's really good okay uh one more thing i wanted to like you said sci- these are not physical right the signs and symptoms are not mostly generally not physical so supposing what okay. may happen uh, i may go to a party and i know i'm all dressed up and i may be depressed inside but visibly to another person it may not appear that you know promela is depressed so what i went okay. to say there's no physical sign that i don't have temperature you know i don't have uh, you know you know i'm not going to have a surgery i'm not you're not seeing physical symptoms of other diseases like you know diabetes heart problems or any other thing a person okay. may appear perfectly normal but he or she may have a lot of mental health concerns going through different phases of depression maybe in a state of panic attack maybe uh, having uh, you know anxiety issues hmm. oh wow okay so say for example we are able to like figure out right say for example i have we have a friend who is not 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 normal like you know we can figure out how do you approach that person saying like hey you just can't say right hey are you depressed that i don't think that's quite like it's not like covid questions right hey what's your temperature today i don't think we can do that so i'll come back to the covid topic because that has caused another uh, uh, ripple of things that is happening around us during this you know a pandemic times as in your organization are you seeing such uh, like sessions also uh, people depressed because of covid absolutely the calls have wow. almost tripled uh, uh, because of uh, the lockdown and you know there was uh, this loneliness as it is with okay. the current situation uh, these have increased substantially and our calls both for mental health concerns and domestic abuse have uh, almost tripled oh my gosh oh, that's that's sad mm-hmm. wow okay um, i'm going to answer your question about to say depression you know you cannot ask someone uh, promela do you right. have depression depression is a taboo word and in fact world health organization it gave it another name so aka the big black dog so for example if i say sujata uh-huh. i i have depression will you help me so uh-huh. you know someone again i'm sorry i'm just using your name da you yeah. go ahead and use my name that is why it is there and i am here for that purpose so yeah. someone may hesitate to say oh my god should i help promela she has depression is it contagious but so if i tell you hey sujata i have a big black dog will you help me take care of it so you may say oh yes sure i will take you know, help you so okay. depression is a taboo word we we again it's not recommended that we ask someone are you depressed uh-huh. we should ask you know we have noticed that uh, something is bothering you or okay. i feel that you know uh, you not your previous self if there's anything i can help with i am there for you so listening listening non judgmentally being compassionate and being there for that someone is what we can do if we identify that someone may be going through depression hmm oh i didn't know that big black dog was the yes ak depression wow thank you for telling that i know uh, i'm you know ignorantly we shouldn't be asking that uh, around so again and someone if someone has a concern they can easily tell their friends hey i have a big black dog please help me take care of it wow that's Oh, absolutely uh, that's a you know good way to ask and also get help too right okay and the reason i was asking you like oh, wow is there a friend if they are having a situation is there a work around to it like can we just point them to something else like saying like hey maybe they don't want to because i was talking about this with my husband and he was saying like what if you by asking that question you are actually pushing that person to make another step that you really didn't want to by asking questions like that like hey is there something bothering you do you want to talk about it by actually talking about it if they feel they are in a pathetic state you are actually driving them off the edge i was like stunned when he asked me that question i mean like would that make people think like that too 
by even so, asking uh, the question i think your husband had a definitely uh, you know a right approach to question and again when we speak yeah. or when we encounter uh, anyone going through any kind of a mental health concern it's very important to use the right choice of words you know to be compassionate to be very gentle to say uh, i uh, firstly to say hey hey sujata uh, you know i am there for you for anything that may be bothering for you you know let me hold your hand let me sit with you for some time uh, if there's anything you would like to share just wanted to let you know i am there for you so okay. be very gentle again i'm not pushing through i'm there to listen i'm there unconditional and without any judgment that's a bright way to approach bingo actually you know what that is exactly what i was thinking i mean like the judgment why are we so judgmental about everything around us like what if whatever they are going through or i am going through that is my own story right i live through it and why are we judgmental what's with this two parts to that question and why are we worried about others judgment what is this problem that everybody has to accept you so you know in general that's human nature you know uh, in general you know maybe it's culturally also we'd like to uh, butt into everyone's affair right yeah um, yes. <laughs> and to say to say you know uh, i want to be liked always and i want yeah. to make sure the other person is liked maybe there is a belief that you know i i'm being too helpful Oh. or i'm trying to interfere but yes there has to be gentle boundaries especially with such kind of issues and people have to understand you know that we need to be respectful that's very very important and to not call you out as a name sujata so, you have depression that means you're not a nice person your mm -hmm. upbringing was not good you've not been raised well you are not a good wife a mother or a good woman you're not a good person so that judgment unconsciously does come out and what we try to do is cut it out yes so just know where to cut out cut it out and move on and take care of your own self first right self so if important. i may give an example uh, uh, recently one of the very popular bollywood actors uh, you know died by suicide yes. uh, social media was rat with you know finger pointing we do not know what was going on with uh, with this particular actor right yes. so again trying to be respectful was so so important but you know the news channels everything was kind of you know uh, making his character yeah. go down like anything that is not the right way that, yeah me too i felt the same way too but actually you know what that is where this whole thing started uh, pramila i was i think it came as a shocker to me okay i couldn't the reason why i am going to use that same uh, example that you used right when he passed away i didn't even i could not imagine that this person would actually commit that uh, you know thing mm -hmm. so i was pondering over it okay he worked hard mm -hmm. he reached where he was right what do we normally tell ourselves like you said our culture in our culture this is what it is work i mean first education you want to please everybody make sure you are educated the highest degree job that is available then you go work make money and then what fame and whatever so he had all of this and it wasn't still enough right i'm like so what is this like what is important then so one big thing again i'm going to go, go back to culture that you know uh, yeah. what we tell our children you know you have to be the best in the class in sports and extracurricular activities i have to be the best wife mother woman daughter employee right if something like a rejection is taught early on it's okay if you get a d grade it's okay if you do not do well in sports it's okay if you are being rejected it's okay if your girlfriend boyfriend ditches you it's okay if you have a divorce it's okay to be not okay in general we don't teach this and when the rejection comes to us it's overwhelming we do not know how to deal with that rejection we know how to deal with success not rejection so this is also one of the key factors which may trigger such kind of you know feelings of depression being not wanted being not accepted being uh, you know futile actually you know what you you said it perfectly that word rejection i think that is what i was looking for i mean i couldn't wrap my fingers around i'm like what what was it like that's true we are not trained to handle rejection 
mm-hmm. everybody has to accept you everybody has to love you when you are in a group of people you should be their star nobody should not you know avoid you or whatever and then all those things and like you said we it's okay to fail and it's okay to be not okay too right that is beautiful i love that i love the way you said it i'm glad let me go back i hope i am not forgetting some of the questions uh, promila ji just give me one second oh you did mention about the breakup and divorce and stuff mm-hmm. like that right adults um since uh, i know that um, people who are watching are asking about kids as well uh when we before we started this session when uh, promila and i were talking we thought adult uh, insight about this topic would be better first in our first discussion uh pramila ji you you say it like what you were telling me in your own words why we are talking about only adult uh, the black dog thing and then mm-hmm. what the kids when will we talk about it just give them a heads up sure so mental health as i mentioned it can can affect anyone male female kids kids as young as 5 6 7 or uh, you know senior citizens anyone i'm going to go back to the example when we go when we on board the plane you know they always say you know if there's an emergency put on your own oxygen mask and then help your kids same thing applies here we as adults if we have children or we are guardians let's ensure we understand our own concerns how to deal with it how to identify once we are in a in a state that i can help others we're going to focus on the kids and the youth who also go through their own share of mental health concerns they have their own share of symptoms and ways to deal with it wow so let's we're going to put our mask today first today we are actually okay um, people who are watching and listening and uh, the somebody uh, question i forgot to ah uh, shweta uh, shweta we will talk about uh, kids and the depression all those things so how to identify them i actually have a few other friends too who messaged about how to handle especially like you know transitioning from one school to another and also more importantly kids who travel from outside of the you know us and who come here and when they settle down here there is a different that they go through and i had some questions about it too but like you said we'll focus on ourselves you know let's put the mask on today for ourselves and then we'll talk about the kids uh, in our next uh, session and uh, sujata if i may just add one line before we go into the details uh-huh. it's, it's more challenging than adults because they have to make sure they balance two cultures one is at home whatever environment yeah. is one is once they step out of the home and for that young brain that young child it's a double task for managing mental health balance between my home and my school so let's be wow. very uh, you know uh, you know uh, conscious of the fact and treat our children in a very extra. optimum way yes 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 extra care fragile extra care. <laughs> fragile yeah. fragile people okay yes and uh, the part about you said right the breakup or divorce or whatever uh, is there any is, i know it's a huge topic but uh, i had a question about it as well how do how do you tell yourself it's okay and you know uh, to stay strong or it's okay i know you said it's okay to be not okay or to be with somebody or not but is there a simple way to handle that so you know divorce happens you know, breakup yeah. happens right and not because if it's my fault or the other person's fault to accept that you know whatever situation was i'm going to let it go it's it, nobody is going to accuse me to say i was the cause of the breakup of my spouse or my significant other or my children so firstly to acknowledge that it's okay that the, the relationship did not did, did not work out i don't have to be a superwoman or the other person need not be a superman accept the fact i am human mistake happened compatibility issues happened and now we have broken up hmm. so but again our culture is not ready to accept because remember i have to be yeah. like i have to be the perfect person perfect yes yes so true so true um okay second part is we uh, since we are in this historic pandemic times right uh, romila so what what are you telling people how to like you know i know medical people are different they are doing a way you know a lot different and taking care of the community us how do you uh, what do you suggest us to keep ourselves calm i know it's been a while but i'm just asking like you know is there anything that we can recover ourselves better i mean like i know a lot of people are struggling through this and feeling like this is only happened to us it's not just happened to us right it's happened to the whole world 
So two parts to it. Say, for example, you know, anyone who already has a mental health concerns and during this time, this may trigger because one is the fear of the virus itself that should I be, should I, uh, will it cause others? You know, how do I deal with it? And then the social isolation, you know, how do I deal with myself being alone or, you know, having no other interaction? So in this areas, normally we have said, you know, use Zoom, use uh, social media and so on and so forth. WhatsApp, be connected, you know, be, be mindful try to eat a balanced diet you know try to do a meditation walks whatever possible but sometimes this social media is also a big curse in causing the isolation increase mm. so we always uh, you know recommend you know whatsapp or social media need to have a cap to it you know an hour in the morning an hour in the evening news it's important because it connects us to the world but also you know any news which is overwhelming you cannot uh -huh. have an overdose of news so need to have a cap to all that also okay. most people have resorted to drinking smoking drugs because of all of this because they are unable to handle the stress which is happening to them so what they do they they resort to such activities because that that becomes like a self medication just because you know i'm in a in an alcohol with an alcohol consumption or something else i am forgetting or i am choosing to forget what is happening around okay okay second part is about the domestic abuse part because you know when a, when abuse happens in a situation between couples significant others or family members they have a chance to let go to go to work go out of the house meet friends but now in this situation everyone is in the house 24 7 hmm. so then again you know the both the victim and the abuser have more ways to provocate that so being mindful of that uh, and again any such situation happens use uh, you know different ways to communicate to talk to and reach for help please reach hmm. for help okay okay i i've been given a situation here about how to deal with verbal abuse mm -hmm. um given a situation here imagine the husband is dependent on his wife mm -hmm. the family has been through a lot of turmoil the wife is the breadwinner but the husband is completely supporting her except financial means the family pulls through and come up in life but in the old age the wife is completely abusing the husband saying that she had to do everything by herself or well, who is there to help such families so Who's i guess it that? must yeah i think this must have been like a history of a long term i don't know i can under, uh, what i can understand from the situation is probably the woman did not have a say in the beginning to say mm -hmm. stuff and then when she's getting back she's getting back basically i don't know what, what word to use for that so <laughs> now the husband is older and he probably does not know what to do uh, so who is there to help such families is the question so two things I can say, you know, supposing you and I are, are there and then I can say, Sujata, you make me angry. You know, you have made me the person I am, oh, right? Oh, we always, oh. we may say like that, right? So I'm blaming the my action because of you, correct? But in reality, the situation is, it's me, not you. I am unable to manage my anger towards you. I am unable to manage my irritation with you. So okay. it's me because Sujata, do I have control over you? No. No. Who who do I have control over? Myself. My own self. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when people come and ask for help, you know, can you help me against my spouse? This, that. I said, do you actually have any control over him or her? No. No. Let me find out ways that I can manage my irritation for you to manage my ability to handle stress with you. Right. So right. if I know we understand this person, she did a lot, you know, uh, for the family because that was the need of the situation. Going forward, uh, we, uh, definitely we would recommend some kind of a counseling for both, uh, you know, a spouse, uh, both uh, the couple. Husband and wife. Yeah. yeah. Because what she needs is acknowledgement from the spouse saying, hey, thank you, you know, ma'am. Huh. Th uh, thank you, dear wife. You did a yeah. lot. And if yeah. I have done any mistakes, I apologize for that and I, or I'm yes. sorry for that. And that does not happen. And what the lady is looking for is, is acknowledge, that. You know, acknowledge me. Actually, it's so funny that you had to say that. 
I've been trying to talk about this. I don't know. Do you you watch Hindi movies? I assume, right? Uh, we all watch it. <laughs> we all watch it. There was this movie called Tapad. Okay, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm saying it right. So that movie, this husband, you know, by accident, whatever, you know, slaps his wife, and and then the next day goes on, and he's still like. Actually, I like the way that they said they are actually a loving couple. But then he actually slaps her by accident, and she, this girl, ponders over it for the next few days. looking for that one apology from the husband he comes around says i love you and he he walks around like nothing happened right and then she actually goes ahead and applies a divorce all i mean friends whoever i spoke to they were like what what is wrong with her who applies for a divorce for just one slap and i was surprised that they actually said that you know what she was not applying divorce for that one slap she was applying because he did not acknowledge or say sorry i did this so that uh, sorry and thank you goes a long way right yes. and she was not able to respect her own self so i'm thinking i think we should be better communicators is what absolutely. i absolutely and again i'm going to go back to culture our yeah. culture you know uh, uh, the caucasian culture you know uh, if i receive a phone call supposing hey honey how are you i love you or if it's my son and daughter huh. i love you to reassure that i am there uh, our culture does not teach us the right words to communicate sujata right. thank you okay uh, it's so difficult to say thank you or say sorry yes. but yes. these two simple words can simplify a lot of relationship concerns and a lot of stress can be <laughs> decreased too uh, coming back to the other point supposing uh, you me and there's a third person we are friends right and you know yeah. okay we are having a conversation i get really angry correct Correct. i will not slap you because you are my friend you are my coworker yes. this husband slapped because he thought he had control over the spouse exactly exactly so, i said the same thing yeah. i said the same thing because he was in a party right yeah. and there are people trying him, yeah. to stop he didn't slap his own boss the boss was yeah. and him i were having the argument he didn't slap his boss he didn't slap his brother in law was trying to stop this whole thing his own brother but he slapped his wife because in spite of all the anger he knew that person would not Say anything. After Not that. say. He felt that he had control over her. Correct. And then how can someone I have control over tell me what to do? So true. So yes, that actually brings a great point. I think we sh- we are all taking the people around us for granted. Absolutely. I guess it will be a good reminder to. I mean, this pandemic times. I I told this in a previous uh, talk uh, show when I had a with a friend. I was telling the same thing. Like you know, we are with our family, our friends. Now we we are depending on them. The more time and the you know, uh, in a very gentle and generous and grateful manner. If you be nice, I think things can uh, get out. Yeah, we, I don't think it will blow out of proportion before it gets there. Uh, let's see. I think. Um, Uh, there's one more example, if I may share, Sujata, with a kid. Yes. Say, supposing a kid comes and says, "Hey, mom, dad, you know, I got a D, or you know, I failed in uh-huh. my exams." Yeah. So the parent will generally say, oh, "Okay, next time do better." Huh. They will say, "Correct." They will never say, "It's okay, child, you got a D. Huh. I'm okay with it." That is the one line. If they say, a lot of lives for our kids and students can be, you know, enhanced, and they will get the acceptance from dad and mom to say, "It's okay, I got an F." but we we fail to say that what we say okay never mind in the next test do better so yeah when you say next time do better that means you are actually acknowledging to the child that you didn't do a good job this time exactly right? exactly yeah. you said it but what we should say it's okay it's, it's son okay. it's yeah. okay so because the child is coming to you asking for you your you approval to say your yeah. approval and if you say next time do better so whatever the fear was it actually just got bigger right exactly yes ah uh, I was very nice, uh, Pramil. Thank you. I I have an eleven year old, so I I think I'm very cautious and I try to you know help her and grow her in the right way. But thank you for that reminder. Sometimes from wherever we come from, we do have that in our head. You know, we don't acknowledge and appreciate what is happening right that minute. Thank you so much. And let me go back. I think I saw one more question here. Uh, how to deal with less sensitive spouses? less sensitive spouses uh wow <laughs> uh so again that answer is very simple can you control yeah. your spouse to be more sensitive no okay can what can you control 
your, how do you handle it yeah yeah how to handle your own uh, feelings uh, yeah. and and again uh, my expectations are my own if i am mm -hmm. able to handle you know my spouse not being sensitive i have a much happier person so i have to manage my own expectations not to say sujata you did do you be sensitive you be nice you be kind you be this Correct. i think a lot of arguments or situations that we end up is because we immediately point the finger on the other person and ask them to do the change that you want right and what we say no make yeah. the change in yourself to accept right. whosoever the person is yes if if that is what you want to do then yes go ahead and do that yes that will again uh, it will help you uh, you know it will be help your wellness if nobody yes. else is correct happiness right find happiness. your own happiness yes and Very if you are happy your family will be happy <laughs> i have another question here from sharanya she is asking uh, how do we address issues related to girls not being included by their peer group i feel like exclusion is a pervasive problem amongst girls especially uh, is it is this related to being in school or somewhere like that i guess it must be it must be to teenage kids um, mm -hmm. in the in the you know uh, middle school uh, i do see this uh, with friends and uh, my own uh, kid also like we see this a lot uh, that uh, kids should accept in their group so that's our question i can read it again for you if you want me to no no that's uh, so so you know uh, uh, here again you know it's uh, america is a country it's a melting pot of different uh, ethnicities different people each have their own set of upbringing and their own uh, state of where they are I, I, as you said we we have a lot of uh, emotional baggage ourselves and we bring mm -hmm. it with us so right. different kids of different ethnicities or different behavior they have been trained to do act in a certain way if we tell our, our, our children you know what if this girl or this boy does not talk to you that's okay try to make a new friend right mm -hmm. you, you cannot be the popular person everywhere and it's possible someone will not like you because of the skin color because of who you are how do you look it's possible and yeah. some just because someone does not like you does not make you a bad person does not make uh, you an unpopular person so again i'm going to we could teach our children to yeah. be sufficient to what they have correct and uh, be accepting will make us more acceptable it's very philosophical but uh, no no i think once you lose track of all that only i think you get um sucked into you know actually what when i was telling you in the beginning of the conversation i didn't know the word depression i was wrong i did know the word depression not in this connotation okay i knew the word depression in the ocean where you know <laughs> water <and go. laughs> that depression so i think like you said the philosophy why i am going there is if you forget this part of philosophy or happiness i think you get stuck in that world when kind of thing yes yes he said, he world said world. you know that kind of situation yeah and you get stuck in that i think so philosophy sometimes is helpful like you can go back to it and uh you know uh, relive that moment saying like you know what if i could have done this better in a different way i would be happy somebody else is also happy yeah yes, the other parts of jata we always you know tell uh, we always uh, recommend to use avoid using negative words supposing my child comes and tells me mom you know xyz is not talking to me to say hey it's uh, you know what did you did you say something you know uh, offending to that person uh. to to say hey maybe can i improve myself than finger pointing to that girl okay yeah boost Start it from yourself yeah yes. boost hey kid it's okay you know what you look great then let me sh shed all positive thoughts in you aha uh -huh. right so just to see like a like a self for this thing right you know just see what did we do today or exactly. to that person makes sense okay one more i had uh, what is that okay this question uh, this was from a friend of mine she said at different points of time we all go through sadness or worry and like you said i didn't know the two week clinical thing but anyways if you do get that at what point of time in your life you actually cross that stage and go into depression like when or when when it does it become the clinical depression the more you prolong and uh, you know when we studied our training uh, it says that sometimes depression gets di diagnosed even 7 years 15 years later Oh, wow okay so uh, and that what we always recommend say say for example you know i if i feel anything you like hopelessness if i tell you sujata i think for the last two days i feel very hopeless i feel that uh, feeling of hopelessness so i should be okay to confide in you and you what i would expect from you is to say pramila 
I understand maybe there's something bothering you. Know that I am there for you. So it does okay. not hurt to ask. The more you prolong your your control over your life will become minimal. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So anything, anytime it affects your day-to-day -day life activities, that is a time to actually seek help ASAP. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see if I did I miss anybody's questions. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Mostly most of them are positive here. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can. Depression is contagious, right? I just heard it from you saying. I was actually thinking about this question. I had it in my head too. Is depression contagious? Okay, let me, I'm going to ask you, okay? Supposing I said, hey, Sujata, I have depression. If I touch you, will you get depression from me? Mm -hmm. It's not flu, okay. right? It's not, no. it's not COVID. It's not uh, the coronavirus, yeah. right? So there are two parts to it, you know, uh, how depression is contagious and it's not contagious. So just because uh, someone is going through a, a depressive phase in life does not make the other person get depression. It's not flu. It's not coronavirus. But have you heard the thing that sometimes when we're with a group of friends, somebody's laugh, laughing, then yes. I'm also laughing, correct? Correct. Because that energy comes into me, right? Mm -hmm. So if I am in a company of people who are in a, in a state of being depressed, it's possible that those thoughts can come to me if I'm susceptible. Okay. It, it okay. depends on my state of mind. So and again, it's not contagious, but yes, uh, uh, it, it is genetic. You, okay. It can be through trauma. Uh, it can be through uh, other uh, concerns also. Supposing okay. there's a family that I have seen my father or mother being in that state, it's possible it can come to me. Uh -huh. So contagious in a different way, but not truly passing from one person to another. Huh. You know, actually, the reason why I was asking that question is because uh, some of us are so busy in our lives. And then do, when we do hear these stories, like we say like, okay, what can we do, right? Mm -hmm. They, they decided to end their lives. It's, it's, uh, it's sad, you know, may their soul rest in peace. And then everybody moves on, right? Except yes. for the very close to people who are connected. But then some people think about it for longer and then yes. they ponder over it. So that is the reason I was asking, why is, is depression contagious? So it is actually that energy continues Comes to, to you. go through. Correct. Yeah. So it, we can't just ignore saying like it, I, I can't do anything about yeah. it, right? Yeah. And so, so for example, help. yeah, the recent um, incident of the Bollywood actor, a lot of people went into a depressive state of mood because yeah. uh, because uh, the whole social media news was all about all of this. Correct. Right. So it and also it, it does give you that uh, yes. thing. Okay. So let's. Uh, but if I go to you and say, Sujata, I need help because of depression, you will not get depression. No, that <laughs> that will probably give me happiness, and yes. I'll be. I'll be actually more grateful that you chose me, right? So, to talk to me or whatever. Yeah. So, so many yes. people ask uh, that Sanjeevni volunteers, are they all depressed people? Mm, I don't, yeah. <laughs> no, you probably have been asked that question. Probably, yeah, so yes. People, yeah. So, it's again, quite no. Possible. All depressed people don't come to help. But even if there is, uh, you know, depression, it does not matter. It's okay to be depressed. It's okay. Yes. You're still a normal person. Yes. Yes. True. Yeah, mixed emotions. <laughs> oh no! Oh, okay. where did I go now? I had a question. Okay, sorry. All right. Uh, did I miss anything else? Ah, this was one question. I actually really like this. Um, how far has society come in terms of accepting mental health issues as a norm, or is it still stigmatized? It's very much stigmatized. It's a very, very big taboo topic. And I'm so thankful to you, Sujata, for you know starting this session on mental health. Not many people talk about it. And we are sincere hope our objective from Sanjeevni is that, you know, let's talk about it. Let's bring the awareness so that depression or you know, people going through depressive symptoms can have their can have their life in a better state. Let's not hmm. judge people. Let's accept it as any disease or any any problem in life. Okay, one more question is, uh, let me see if I, I can see it here. Can you see the question, Pamela? Is schizophrenia caused by depression or is it completely different? Does it fully recover? Schizophrenia is a kind of a serious mental health condition. 
schizophrenia uh, yes if the treatment do, does start you know if there's treatment yes uh, we've we've seen again in since that people do recover but treatment is important you know for this okay. one needs to approach a psychiatrist who can you know uh, do the needful if it's hospitalization or any kind of medication so there's okay. two kinds of professional psychologist and uh, psychiatrist a psychologist mostly would do psychotherapy and a psychiatrist as a medical doctor who can prescribe medicine schizophrenia uh -huh. is a serious mental health condition okay I hope that answers your question, Madhumita. And uh, I think. Uh, and nothing is contagious. Nothing, nothing at all is contagious. Yes. Uh, so, okay, I think I uh, pretty much uh, read all the questions that was here. Okay, this one was for you uh, personally, like in your. Uh, let me get here. Okay, what is uh, what does your organization do to spread awareness about mental health issues? These are specifically for you and Sanjeevni. Yeah, so we do uh, awareness events uh, once every quarter. Uh, you know, in the past we've done it in person, but mm -hmm. this year due to COVID, we had a lot of these online webinars. Okay. And uh, we uh, awareness sessions are very important. We do a lot of community outreach. Uh, we had uh, walk-in centers at many locations uh, early this year, but now uh, it's only operational in Naperville. Mm -hmm. uh, these walk-in centers are very useful because you know people can simply walk in. You don't need an appointment, and you could at least ask. You can at least talk. So okay. awareness sessions, the community outreach, our walk-in sessions have been very important uh, in spreading the information about okay. mental health concerns, uh, information. If I know information, I can help myself and others. Okay. All right. Good. And what has been your most effective program, uh, Pramila, to help people with mental and what makes it successful? I think reaching to people like you, Sujata, okay. you okay. approach Sanjuini because you understand, you understood the importance of why it's so important. You set okay. up this session. So if we have, you know, more citizens around, whosoever is listening to, to accept and, you know, maybe have a session like this, I think these are the best way to effectively help our community. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. One more. Uh, da, 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 da. Where did it go? Ah. What were some of the setbacks in your journey, Pramila, and how did you overcome those? Uh, you know, when I started this, uh, uh, I did help people. Or I, I used to volunteer uh, at other organizations. So when we started this, uh, the first thing is saying, are you mentally depressed? That's why you want to do something like this? No, huh. it's the reverse. Everyone gets depressed, you know, one time or the other, but that's not the reason. What, what I had noticed in the community that a lot of people had concerns, but no formal organization to reach help in a South Asian context. So, but with that, there was an initial, uh, how should I, uh, roadblock. But over time, uh, I'm very happy to say Sanjeevni has got three dozen volunteers uh, and it runs 24 seven. That means three dozen people actually believe in making sure we bring help for anyone going through mental health concerns. Wow. So uh, there's roadblocks always, uh, Sujata. Nothing starts uh, close. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so but, uh, our objective you had is a to, vision. Yes. We we try to help wherever possible. And uh, to anyone listening, you know, that I think uh, Sujata already shared the helpline number as 224-424-0050. People can call anonymous. No questions asked. It's confidential. And help is provided by anyone who is trained in what we are offering the recommendations. And uh, yeah. if you live in, uh, if you want, you can always come to our walk-in center in Naperville. It's free. And wow, that's awesome! Thank you, thank you for what you are doing. I think for uh, uh, today's session, uh, because we were more focusing on adults and how to handle our own. Uh, so I think to end to say, like it, the most important thing I take away from this is handle your own self. You know, find your your own happiness and peace, and you know. I, then things will settle down by itself. And the and most important, acknowledge, uh -huh. acknowledge. Acknowledge whatever is happening, yes. Unless right. until you acknowledge, unless until somebody accepts, uh -huh. how do I go to you for help, Sujata, right? I, I should know something yes. is not right, working right for me. Correct, yes, acknowledgement, mostly. First, A for acknowledgement, going forward today. 
and b for big black dog today <laughs> you, yeah you got it and everyone you know it's okay to have a big black dog and i and yes. it's okay to ask for help to walk this big black dog sometimes yes 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 let's all acknowledge that and if somebody does have it let's acknowledge the friend who is having it it is okay please no judgments um let's listen i do see friends posting on facebook like you know whenever you have a, a situation or i my doors are open i have coffee for you i i do see such posts and i i believe in it too mm-hmm. but today i took it one step forward because i just didn't want to do that post alone mm-hmm. you know the generic one i just wanted to say that you know i'm here people are there who have devoted i think you've been doing this for so long right and you you had five that years. Question, uh, five, years, yeah. five years five years yes sanjeevni five years so it's not easy right to take this path and focus on this and make sure you are there for uh, people helping out so thank you so much i can't thank you enough for coming today too so the kids situation and uh, things around the kids how to uh, you know handle them like the two parts that pramila was talking about we will meet again we will tell you when uh, in the ne- one of the posts that we can uh, you know let uh, people know and uh, more questions that you have for kids yes we will bring that over yeah. okay and uh, sujatha you know for the uh, kids uh, situation i think it's 80% parents who have to do, work on it right. if they want mental health concerns to be less for the children it's 80% of their work so it's very very important and we definitely right. we can touch base with it we d- we can do that yes yeah so let's all uh, work on us and that will be our homework and take away project let's on be happy uh, you know take ourselves uh, good care and acknowledge what we have and we'll uh, bring uh, you know our questions next uh, i don't know when it will i don't want to say but but we will talk we, about we should it. not stress other people and and you know what another thing we always say sujata you know let's be thankful for what we have and Correct. thankful for what we do not have true true that true that yes so yes i know everybody it's sunday and i know uh, people uh, must have been had a you know busy uh, holiday weekend so let's not stress people more out yes, by keeping them, <laughs> keeping them online uh, let them go to their kitchen or whatever doing whatever family time enjoy your family time friends time they are uh, very valuable very worthy so take care pramila ji thank you so much Thank you Sujata thank you for having and uh, from everyone from Sanjeevni thanks to thank you thank you and thank everyone you so thanks much. thanks for staying along and you know hearing us out <laughs> yes thank you guys thank you for your support and then adios have a great weekend finished off bye bye